Good morning, everyone. It is December the 1st. I want to thank you for being here for this facts only video. A lot of stuff to cover. Thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, all of those things. Appreciate you, and especially all of the new subscribers that have been joining us lately. Let's jump right into the facts only. I'm going to start right here. Keep your eyes on Syria. We know that Assad is now saying that he's going to push out the rebels and all of this jazz. That's not the point I want to talk about. I can tell you the battle lines continue to divide, and this also affects the war in Ukraine. I want to share this with you. I do a lot of reading of Russian news. Not watching the Soloyov uh, propagandas of the Margarita Semenyons. I'm talking about reading the headlines. I want to read what the Russians are reading. And so this is actually in Ria Novosti, and I will translate it for you. The article is to the right. I translated the three headlines for you, and the one in the red box is in yellow. So say, Ukosave uh, not Nikh. That is the beginning title there in the um, quotation marks. That says everything points to them. And then that follows with a question in bold, who is behind the escalation in Syria? Then in the red box, it says, among the Syrian militants who attacked Aleppo, Ukrainian commanders were spotted. So once again, building the narrative inside Russia that Ukraine is there in Syria commanding and fighting against the motherland and fighting against our allies, Syria and Iran. It's Ukrainians that are doing all of this. And this is why we must wipe them off the planet. Guys, it's everywhere. Unfortunately, it does not get any mainstream media if you can't read or understand Russian and you're just watching in your own languages. But I'm telling you, this is what is in the Russian news. We need to keep our eyes on it. There is definitely a connection that Russia will use and try to manipulate for their benefit in this. Now, Today, Putin signing off on a record Russian defense spending at the same moment while the top EU officials were visiting Kyiv. Now, we know that Zelensky came out just a little while ago giving a speech saying, okay, we can come into NATO because there's a NATO meeting coming up in Brussels. But if we come in, Article 5 will not have to be uh, enforced, which means a NATO nation would have to support another NATO nation militarily if there was a war going on. But Zelensky also said, if we come in, it has to be all of our territories, not just something that would be behind the frozen line. It would have to include Lugansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia, Kherson, and Crimea. While that was happening, at the same time, Putin signing off on record, record Russian defense spending. They're not going anywhere. 32.5% of the country's budget is allocated to national defense. That is higher even than North Korea, which is about 28%. We covered that a couple of weeks ago on a facts only video. The amount is 13.5 trillion rubles, $145 billion. And yes, I know the ruble is going down the toilet. I get all of that. But the bottom line is they have resources there and around the world and they are still making money regardless of the ruble in 2024 the budget expenses for the defense capability of russia amounted to 28.3 percent so year over year we're moving to, from 28.3 percent allocation to 32.5 percent allocation i understand inflation i get all of that here's the bottom line they are ramping up their war machine even more in light of western missiles flying into Russia. In fact, Sergei Lavrov was asked about that by uh, Putin's personal reporter, Zaruba, and I have the video, but it's just too goofy to play. But basically he says, what are we going to do with all these Western missiles that are flying into Russia? And Lavrov turned to him and says, oh, they will find out what will happen because their missiles are flying at us. So this is what's happening right now. Now, on top of that, a couple of days ago, we have Kim Jong-un in North Korea saying, hey, we are 100% committed to the war effort in Ukraine. It wasn't he said we're 100% committed to partnership with Russia. He said we're 100% committed to the war in Ukraine. North Korea supplying Russia. It is a fact and now these weapons are flying into Ukraine. What kind of weapons? Well, the KN23 or 24 systems. Ballistic missiles, mass 3,415 kilograms, warhead 500 kilograms, and yes, it can carry nuclear, range 900 kilometers, 
It basically can cover the entire nation of Ukraine accuracy up to 35 meters. We know that there are at least 100 of these missiles there available for Russia to use. They have already used some against Ukraine. Additionally, and even, I hate to say even uglier, but in certain situations, you'll and you'll understand me in just one moment, 170 uh, millimeter M1989 self-propelled artillery firing range is 35 kilometers. Remember that 35 kilometers and additionally, even worse, 240 millimeter M1991 MLRS systems with a range of 40 to 60 kilometers. Now, why is this so important? Why is this devastating or potentially if these things continue to sling, because it does make a difference. North Korea has given its city smashing rocket launchers to Russia. These defense systems that North Korea were holding on to, and they have more there in North Korea, were there to be able to hit Seoul in case of a war. Now, many of them are in Russia with the ability to hit Ukrainian cities. And does it make a difference? It absolutely makes a difference. As Ukraine is striking into Russia, airplanes are having to go back, systems are having to go back for launching the glide bombs or missiles. These systems can move around, be mobile, and still strike Ukrainian cities. And we're seeing it in Sumy. We're seeing it in Kharkiv. We're seeing it in Zaporizhia. These types of weapon systems are very, very important. Let me just show you for a second. This is uh, Eastern Ukraine, I circled Kyiv for you there in the blue. I will tell you the cities right now that can be struck with these type of North Korean systems. Sumy, it is within range easily. Kharkiv, already being smashed by these systems. It is within range easily. Then I come down to this beltway here, and you can see Kramatorsk there. But this is where Kramatorsk, Slavyansk, uh, I'm talking about this area right here. Constantinople, Constantinivka is, in fact, I shared with you on facts only a couple days ago, Slavyansk has now closed their schools, no public meetings, no outdoor things, nothing in Slavyansk. Why? Because I believe many of these systems are striking Slavyansk right now. Additionally, it brings into target Zaporizhia. It brings into target down here, Kherson. It is definitely a problem for Ukraine as Russia is supplied and supplied and supplied. The West, we need to continue to supply. Ukraine, of course, needs to continue focusing on its mobilization. But guys, this war is not going anywhere. And over the next couple of months, it's going to be very, very, very ugly. There's going to be a lot of things flying through the air. And I don't know. I'm, I'm just here to tell you right now, I will have Jane on on a live at three o'clock Eastern today. If you're watching this video, three o'clock Eastern Standard Time, we'll be doing a full live with Jane from Kiev. And we'll be talking about all of this, but the power infrastructure is critical and situations and things like this do not make it any easier. Let's go to the next couple of things. Zelensky talking about uh, the Politico EU put out this article. Zelensky's diplomatic play for Trump, where Zelensky is like indicating the desire to maybe talk or negotiate, et cetera, et cetera. Dmitry Kaleba came out and gave analysis to that. If you do not know who Dmitry Kaleba is, he is the former foreign minister of Ukraine, did a phenomenal job for the first two years of this war. Um, there was just a transition made to the new foreign minister. I have always been and will always be a Dmitry Kaleba fan. I think he did a phenomenal job in this war. His ability to communicate English, his understanding of how to deal with the nuances of English and dealing with partners and making friendships. The guy did a great job. But I, I want you to understand when you're reading or you're hearing, oh, Zelensky's talking negotiations. Zelensky's talking negotiations. Make sure you understand this. Make sure. And Kaleba writes it much better than I can say it. The former minister predicts Trump will start moving rapidly to try to stop the war, but warns that neither Zelensky nor Putin are interested in a quick solution because they both believe that will be achieved at their expense. This is Kaleba talking. Spot on, Dmitry Kaleba. Kaleba added, Putin firmly believes he's close to getting it all. So why should he agree to anything? The second problem is that if you listen carefully to Putin, he says he's ready for a ceasefire. 
but not one that will be used to arm Ukraine. There is the key stickler. You see, we're talking about and we're hearing even in the Kellogg plan, ceasefire, load up Ukraine with weapons. <laughs> Putin's not going to go for that, Kaleva, Kaleva is saying. His demands will not only be uh, territorial concessions and no NATO membership, but also basically no Ukrainian army. And that will undermine the whole idea of security guarantees. Kaleba closes by saying the trick for Zelensky in his dealings with Trump is to make sure it is Putin who gets the blame for any failed peace initiatives. Guys, you know what you get, Kaleba? Slava Ukraine! I'm telling you right now, that is spot on analysis coming from Dmitry Kaleba. And these are the people you need to listen to when you try to get the understanding of Ukraine. We listen to Ukrainians and Dmitry Kaleba, perfect analysis. So if you've been out there and you've been wondering, oh, peace, 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 we're just going to quit. We're just going to give up. No way. No way. And it's much more complicated than just the freezing of a line. I promise you, Kaleba laying it out very, very well. Guys, today, 3 o'clock Eastern, we'll have a live Q&A with Jania. That is my partner. There we are standing uh, just recently in front of the Donetsk Oblast sign, the very famous sign there with all the flags. That is just on the road rolling in, actually, to Pokrovsk, if you want to know, on that side of the Donetsk Oblast. Um, plan to be here. Set your alarm. Set your clock. Jania in Ukraine will also be giving away a free signed autographed battle flag that was signed on the zero line. Uh, no money, just our way to say thank you for being a part of our community and appreciating all that you do to support Ukraine. You guys be blessed, and we'll see you live 3 o'clock Eastern.